Okay, well, I'm pleased to be joined by Christine Williams, new director of real estate for the St. Paul Port Authority. Um, as you know, the Port Authority is an economic development agency that expands the tax base, serves as a conduit to quality job opportunities, advances sustainable and equitable development, and advocates for river commerce. Um, so, Christine, thank you for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for reaching out. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit about, first of all, how long have you been on the job now in this new role? Well, this is week three, halfway okay. through week three. So I'm I'm just starting to feel like I have figured out where things are saved and I'm starting to figure out how to navigate to the building each day. So it's been it's been okay. great so far. So are you just sort of dipping your toes in the water or jumping in with both feet or how is it? <laughs> I feel like I've jumped in with both feet. Yes. Okay. Well, great. Well, tell us a little bit, uh, I guess, about your specific duties as um, director of real estate with the Port Authority. So my role um, will really be to try to focus on the real estate side of some of the projects that we're working on. and. From what I can tell, um, we're, again, we're in week three, so <laughs> I am still figuring this out, but um, I seem to be able to touch the project sort of at, at lots of different phases um, throughout their life cycle from um, trying to build early relationships, potential future partners, um, finding, um, advancing those relationships through to a, a transactional document type phase, and then um, working with our clients, uh, our tenants after they're um, under contract and, and seeing those those real estate aspects of the project across the finish line. Okay. And so, um, yeah, uh, one of the things that w was talked about in your bio that you have uh, an impressive background, having worked both in the United States and Canada. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about that, some of your experience in this line of work. Sure. So I graduated from the University of St. Thomas uh, as an undergraduate with a real estate finance degree. And then I went back there uh, for an MBA because I liked their real estate professor so much. And um, at the time I started my MBA, I was with Target Corporation. And then I found my way to the railroad in Minneapolis to manage the U.S. portfolio. Um, and after um, I was there for about six years, and they asked me to move to Canada and take over responsibility for their North American portfolio. And I we touched a little bit of every type of real estate project, real estate transaction from coast to coast in Canada and the U.S. And then uh, when during the pandemic, I moved back to the States and I dipped my toes in the brokerage world a little bit. But when the opportunity to move to the port came up, I had to jump on it because this is really, um, this this is where I, I'm really excited to be and I think is a great use of my skills. Yeah, tell us a little bit more about that. What excites you about working for the Port Authority? I think the Port is, first of all, it's an amazing group of people to work with. I feel so welcomed. I enjoy and look forward to coming into the office every day. Uh, it's a great group. I feel like we do three or four times the volume of work for the number of people here, but we do that because of the amount of respect um, for each other and and really our focus on the mission of the port itself. And the work is very interesting. The The projects uh, are, they're focused on building positive good in the community. And um, really the, the entire group is very much in line with the mission and focused on trying to do the good things that need to be done by redeveloping brownfields, creating equity throughout the community, um, and, and building building things that the community itself can be proud of. And the the component of our of, of supporting our river commerce is so essential. I, I think a lot of people don't really appreciate the importance of that throughout the community and, and throughout the state. And being able to take some of the things I learned at the railroad and apply it here is is really just it's it's been it's it's really exciting and I think the opportunities will they'll keep coming. I've I've just barely stepped into the shallow end here, but I'm I know that we'll have lots of opportunities to to work on those types of projects. 
Yeah, one project we've been hearing a lot about, of course, is the Heights um, redevelopment of the uh, former Hillcrest Golf Course, I believe it's called. Um, what can you tell us about that as far as um, kind of where things stand? I believe there's recently a groundbreaking there. And you, where, where do we stand as far as, um, you know, leasing and construction and things like that? So we've had a lot of movement on the Heights. Um, I was actually out there today on site to see um, some of our remediation efforts. We're about halfway mm -hmm. through those remediation efforts and moving some of that contaminated soil off site. Um, we have all of our funding in place for the infrastructure, which is very exciting. Um, we have a relationship with Sherman Associates as our lead developer to focus on the residential aspect of the Heights. And our industrial buyer, we have our first industrial buyer secured and we are working on contracts, LOIs, moving towards purchase agreements for two or three other sites. Um, we're hoping to be able to start breaking ground on the first light industrial building uh, mid-year next year, uh, Q2 2024. And our residential projects will start uh, breaking ground very soon after that. Um, we are hoping to have all of the infrastructure and site prep work completed before 2025. And um, there, there'll be a little bit of an overlap. It's a big site. There's lots of roads. There's lots of sites of different types of uses throughout the site. But um, it, it's going to be a, there's going to be a lot going on out there in a really great way over the next couple of years. And um, I, I don't can we share our lead community news? Yeah, that we've been pre-certified, yes. So it, we're, we are very, very excited to learn today that we are pre-certified for a lead community platinum. Nice. Uh, that we are going to be working towards. Uh, the, the sustainability mission at the Heights in particular is really an important focus for us. So we were very excited to receive notification that we're pre-certified in that respect. Well, that's it. Very exciting news, and uh, we're joined here also by Andrea Novak, uh, just in case you're wondering. Um, <laughs> hello, Andrea. Hi. Um, so, yeah, very exciting news there, and remind us a little bit about, we're talking about pretty extensive development here. Remind us a little bit about the scope of what we're talking about over time in terms of residential uh, development, the number of housing units, things like that, as well as... Um, some of the industrial uses you're planning there. Um, so, sure, but the, so the the Heights was redevelopment of about 112, 112 acres. And um, we are targeting a thousand housing, housing units. units. And our target is for a thousand light yeah. industrial jobs uh, in six buildings. Well, I think that the, the buildings, it, is it's a target, but I believe some of the parcels could be possibly divided if needed, with more than one building. With more than one building, so or at least six. Buildings. At least at six, least six depending on the user, and then twenty acres of green space, um, some active, some inactive, and that includes a five-acre park that the public, that's um, City of Saint Paul's Park and Recreation Department will manage. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the 112 acres. This had been a pretty uh, dormant site for quite a while now. I, hadn't been, I mean, this is something that was really needing uh, uh, some, some new development, correct? Absolutely. I think that I'd have to look back, to, um, but I think it'd been like 2018 was probably when the golf course closed. So this has been a vacant site for a number of years. And what's exciting now is that um, it's we're bringing it to uh, a better use. And so when you look at it, it was a it was working as a private golf course that was not accessible to people unless they were paying to get in. And mm -hmm. it got to the point where that wasn't a viable business solution. And there is such a need for housing and a need for um, jobs with low barriers to entry. And so we're bringing those jobs and we're bringing the housing to the greater east side, which is what um, a lot of the neighbors are excited about the residents and we are as well. And we're talking about a range of housing types, right? With some affordable and um, can you touch yes. on that a little bit? 
You know, I would say that the housing, we'd really want to defer the housing questions to Sherman as sure. Sherman Associates because they're taking the lead. But absolutely, they have J.O. companies coming in and doing yeah. the affordable housing apartments. We have or they have Habitat for Humanity coming in and doing a very big project with 120 to 130 mm -hmm. housing units, which is the biggest that that I believe they've done in this market. And then Sherman has some ideas for I think they're calling it affordable work how work work housing. But mm -hmm. I would drive some of those questions mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, for sure. We'll be uh definitely keeping touch with in touch with those folks. Uh shout out to uh Chris Sherman and Johnny O'Para and all those good folks there who are working on on that housing piece. So um but yeah, um so what else are you working on? Christine, as far as, uh, you know, I know you're just getting started, but anything else you're working on uh, with the Port Authority kind of on the on the development side right now? Um, we do have, um, we have a number of remnant parcels that we're working on finding the right fit for um, whether that's new tenants or um, another use for those sites. And I'm starting to wrap my head around what that looks like and, and what that means. Um, so stay tuned there a lot of stay, absolutely I think there's some really yeah. exciting things coming and some really exciting opportunities um, that are being laid out in, with a some strategic planning over the next year or two for the port yeah awesome. and I think one of the big focuses that we talk about is just being opportunity ready so while mm -hmm. it's all hands on deck at the heights we have to also stay on top of what the other development opportunities are in the city of St. Paul so that when there's a brownfield opportunity and we can come in and make sure that we're bringing in new jobs and more a higher tax base that we're ready to act quickly as needed. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, so going back to uh, what you were talking about before, uh, Christine, you, you were, you're a Tommy. The um, mm -hmm. University of St. Thomas, I know they have a really strong reputation for their real estate school there. And, um, you know, the late, great Herb Towsley was the director there for a number of years. I don't know. Did you know Herb at all? Or I um, did. Through some of the alumni networking, I had the opportunity to meet Herb. And mm -hmm. he was, um, I didn't, I didn't have classes from him. He was after I was there. But yes, I did have the opportunity to meet him. Yeah, they're, uh, you know, and, and they're in good hands now as well um, with their current leadership. But uh, just wanted to to get that in because we uh, we always had uh, enjoyed connecting with Herb in the past on real estate issues and things like that. So, um, yeah, and anyway, just kind of in general also, um, what what attracted you to this line of work? What have you always just kind of been interested in real estate as a possible career? Um, um, in some ways, when I was in high school, I worked for a company that recorded legal documents and my friends hmm. were having fun, like at the coffee shop. And I was off at the Ramsey County courthouse recording a mortgage for someone. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I, when I was at St. Thomas, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I serendipitously found my way over to the real estate course in the real estate department because mm -hmm. um it was something i knew and and it seemed interesting and i just was really drawn to the the school and, and the professors at the school and that all of the aspects um i i left i when i when i graduated i thought i might want to be an appraiser i thought i might want to do some development work and i found my way into a corporate real estate niche that really, I, I really enjoyed. And it gave me the opportunity to experience transactions of all different types in all different corners of the industry. And I really, I really liked being able to take a look at a piece of property and, and ask what's the best use for it and not be constrained by some outside idea that it needs to be, we, we're, we're in this industry and we need to make it this type of use. And, um, that that gave me the opportunity to learn quite a bit about about how real estate worked in different components of different types of transactions, and I I was really drawn to the port because I I feel like the port approaches you know a lot of the projects in the same way. What's what's the best 
What's the best use for this? What is the best way to make this useful and positive and, and bring good things to the community? And um, I was really drawn to the mission of the port and, and the types of work. They're, they're challenging projects, but for the port's involvement, a lot of these projects may not you know, come to fruition. And um, what I really liked the positive attitude that when it, it when it, when it, there was something that was needed in the community, the port will find a way to help make that happen. Um, they have a lot of resources and tools and a lot of knowledge in this this group, and that's how I found my way here. Hopefully, bringing along the things I learned along the way. Yeah, and it must be gratifying to see those new uses emerge from a site that you know, like we talked about before, had been. Uh, dormant or underused for a number of years now and all of a sudden now things are happening there um absolutely so, yes so that's good um so what else uh we, we've covered uh, a fair amount of ground here but um you know is there anything else you'd like to talk about or mention before i let you go I, I don't think so i think we've covered about everything i can think yeah. of this afternoon <laughs> yeah yeah well, and I think the good news is that we have reasons to stay in contact. There's a lot of really great oh, yeah. things going on and we're going to have different um, stories that are going to pop up that we'll be excited to talk about in the very yeah. near future. Things are going in a great direction. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you both for, uh, for joining me today and uh, we'll definitely be in touch and um, have a good rest of your day. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye.